Uh, good morning to all. Uh, hope I am audible to everyone. And uh, I take this opportunity to welcome you all for this uh, particular uh, guest lecture on career opportunities in data science. So, um, our resource person Arun Kumar Sambandhan have a wide experience in this particular field, nearly around uh, 12 years. And he is associated with the shell for uh, five plus years. And he had led so many uh, projects, which is very vital for the shell. And he also an active person in leading the team. And he is the right leader. And he has taken his team to a greater height. With a lot of valuable projects and uh, valuable asset to the company, I think today he is the right person at the right moment to give us a valuable information regarding the opportunities in the data science. Thank you. Thank you for the intro and thank you for this opportunity. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a great pleasure to talk to the students <laughs> and share my uh, experience and the thoughts on uh, what is data science and what are the opportunities lies in the data science and how you guys can uh, uh, explore this particular opportunity and so on. And also another reason uh, uh, for me uh, to be part of this uh, uh, webinar is that I am also a mechanical engineer turned data scientist. So it notes more relevance that uh, I am talking about this particular talk, I talk, talk to the, uh, the uh, electronic engineers forum. Okay. So with that, uh, I quickly uh, moved my uh, presentation. Uh, before that, I just want to give a, a safety for this call. Uh, since we are in the middle of pandemic, I just want to make sure that we uh, take uh, the necessary protocols to keep ourselves and our surroundings and the people uh, safe and sound. Uh, just make sure that you follow all the protocols uh, that's been uh, said here, not only for this call, even beyond this call, I want you to follow these protocols. Uh, so let's start with uh, uh, just uh, make sure that your environment, wherever you are right now, is safe and secure. In case of any emergency, please feel free to stop the call and take the or attend the emergency. So don't worry about that. The same applies for me as well. And uh, and 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 if any children are around, make sure that they have been uh, engaged or they have been attended by someone so that uh, they'll be safe and uh, in the right hands. And in case of uh, uh, any questions, please feel free to stop and ask questions or you can use the chat box to post your questions. I am also going to have uh, some uh, mentee questions in between my slides to get your responses and uh, uh, thoughts. Uh, please uh, actively participate in that as well. And also, uh, uh, while you're taking this call, just make sure that you are in the right posture and uh, using the right ergonomics or the, uh, or the, the furniture and so on to uh, make yourself to be uh, comfortable for the next round of hours. Also keep uh, water or uh, by your side to keep yourself hydrated and so on. These are the basic uh, uh, safety calls. I don't expect uh, uh, this uh, to be followed only for this call. I expect this to be followed uh, until we get out of this COVID pandemic. Okay. With that, uh, uh, let's get started. Okay. Uh, can you uh, uh, please get to this uh, uh, site, www.menti.com and use this code and share your thoughts on what, what the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear about data science. Use your mobile phone or laptop or tab, uh, whatever uh, you have right now. You just go to this site, www.menti.com and it will ask for a code. Just type in this code and just uh, feed your responses. What the first that comes to your mind? Anything, it could be anything. Let me know if you have any challenges. Are you able to get in? Anyone response, please? Yes, it is, uh, uh, it is going to the mentee and it asks the question like first thing that comes to your mind when you hear about data science. Yeah, C can you type in your responses? Yeah, yes, I just yes. want to know uh, uh, what's your understanding before uh, me giving me the, the detailed explanation of what is data science. It could be anything, whatever your understanding. You can write it in a single sentence or a single word or uh, that just whatever comes to your mind, you just uh, share your thoughts. 
collection of data. That's great. Numbers, values, data. Wow, great. Any other thoughts? Data crunching, okay. Numbers, okay. How to make it usable? Oh, that's great. Getting closer. Let me give five more seconds. Our students, your responses will be reflecting on the screen. Yeah, I yeah. Request, yes. I request the students to submit your responses. Yeah, analysis. Yeah, collection of data is uh, the major response so far. Analysis, data bank, experience, available data. OK, just two more seconds. OK, cool. Thanks. Thanks for your responses. There is, there is no right, there is no wrong in this. OK, I just want to understand uh, uh, what's your know, thoughts before uh, starting the sessions so thanks for all your uh, responses yeah so it's it, you're right uh, it's a collection of data and it's it's it talks about numbers you know, number crunching or playing with the numbers or uh, uh, or making some value out of the data so whatever you said is correct it's a combination of all of that but we will we will we will uh, uh, discuss in detail what exactly the definition of data science what are the things will come under data science and so on but whatever you said is also part of the data science okay let's move on uh, so this is a, a quick uh, intro about me. Already uh, intro has been given. I just want to uh, quickly uh, talk about my journey. Uh, as I said, uh, I am a mechanical engineer turned data scientist. I did my mechanical engineering from Government Engineering College Salem. Then uh, I joined as an industry engineering uh, engineer and uh, tractors and farm equipment. That's something ways or aware of. It's one of the uh, leading tractor manufacturing company in India. And there I was uh, responsible for more of uh, 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 assembly line balancing or new product introduction and improving the process and introducing the new process it, it, and, and doing a, a more of a work time study analysis, something you guys have uh, studied in uh, operation research subject and so on. So those were the things I was doing there. Then uh, I, I decided to do my master's and uh, I cracked CAT, so not CAT, sorry, GATE. Uh, then operate for uh, uh, all the the premier institution in India, IIT Madras or uh, IIT Kanpur or IIC Bangalore. Then unfortunately or fortunately, <laughs> I got a, 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 a seat in uh, uh, IIT Madras for doing my Master of Science by Research in Operation Management. Uh, this is something uh, uh, I was not aware when I applied for the uh, 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 master's. I was thinking uh, to do either a master of engineering or master of uh, technology, but I ended up doing the master of science. And even I'm not sure you guys are aware of this particular course. Uh, even I want to talk a little bit about this particular course. Uh, even if you guys uh, uh, want to do uh, a PhD or get into academics, I think this is the right course you can go for because this is gives you a more of a preliminary platform for you to understand what, how uh, the research environment would be, what the demands of research and so on. This is an excellent course, uh, especially if you want to get into academics or if you want to do a, uh, if, if you have idea of uh, doing a PhD. And, and of course, you have an opportunity to get into an industry as well. That's, that doesn't mean that uh, it's not suitable for the industry. But yeah, but this is very suitable for people who really want to do uh, research and, uh, and so on. Okay, and then I got into a, a caterpillar, uh, and uh, you know the caterpillar, right? It's it manufacture heavy machines like uh, track type tractors, uh, JCB like machines, and so on. And there I was uh, information analyst. I joined. Uh, uh, it, it's called information analytics in that particular. Uh, uh, I mean, in the particular domain, but it, it's it's also a more of a data science uh, team actually. So I used to do a lot of. Uh, 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 data science uh, projects, especially I am responsible for uh, 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 doing the project, which is uh, monitoring the health of the machines from the uh, remote location and so on. Then I joined a shell as a data scientist, and uh, uh, then currently I am a data science team lead. Uh, I have uh, six to seven uh, data scientists reporting to me, and they're responsible for uh, and trading and supply uh, business data science services. So there are different businesses in Shell, and uh, trading and supply is one of the businesses, and I am taking care of uh, all data science services related to that. 
okay uh, that's a quick journey about me and uh, another uh, menti can i go to the same site and just uh, give me uh, your responses why did you join engineering i assume that the people who are on the call are uh, uh, from engineering background it could be any engineering just go to the site again and use the same code i think if you already logged in you don't need to enter the code again and just uh, give your responses at a passion engineering cool parent choice okay whether there is no right or wrong in any of these questions okay it's it's <laughs> it's it's feel free to uh, answer okay others okay that's great Add a question for anything, okay? I think we have twenty plus uh, uh, folks on the call, right? Let me quickly get a response. Okay. Okay, cool. No problem. Uh, that's fine. Cool. Uh, yeah. So uh, some of them said uh, uh, they 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 uh, they had a passion for engineering. That's the reason they joined. And few of them said that the parents wanted to be an engineer. That's why you joined. And uh, you also have other reasons, like uh, maybe probably uh, after twelfth, uh, everyone wanted to be a doctor or engineer. And but you you were cut out you were uh, that twelfth cut out was not good enough to, to crack a, a doctor so you ended up being engineer that also could be a reason I'm not saying that's wrong uh, even even if you take me I wanted to do a B.Sc mathematics to be honest my parents uh, did it the other way that so ended up being engineer uh, but but that's 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 no right or wrong in that that's perfectly fine. And uh, so even someone uh, said that uh, they they had a patient, right? Maybe they were really want to do uh, some research or uh, I want to start up a new company in the engineering field, or uh, in, in terms of uh, getting into entrepreneurship and so on. Could be anything. Could be right. So there is no wrong, right or wrong in this. Okay, right. But thing is that the one thing that we need to be aware whether uh, you you choose in the engineering by patient or you choose in the engineering by uh, someone's uh, 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 wish or the compulsion that doesn't matter. Now you are an engineer, right? So you need to understand what are the current trends in the market. Okay, so uh, so that you can adapt yourself to the the current uh, changes or the market trends, so that you can. Uh, 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 come up with the playing colors to the whatever the career you choose. So that's uh, one point I wanted to highlight. Uh, so as uh, the famous saying from Charles Darwin says that it is not the strongest of the species or the most intellectual of the species that survives. Okay, it is the one that is the most adaptable to the change. Okay, this is something very important. It, it's, it's applicable not only for the career; it's applicable for uh, anything even for a relationship even for your uh, uh, education so whatever so just keep this in mind so keep yourself updated keep yourself upskilled keep yourself uh, 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 getting to know what's happening in the market so that you could be ready to face any challenges that comes up in the uh, future okay so that's the reason we are talking about data science here so now all the engineering companies or even the other companies getting into the uh, uh, getting into the trend of uh, integrating the data science aspects of uh, uh, the things into their uh, current process. So that's the reason I wanted uh, 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 this particular uh, things to be addressed uh, to the engineers to understand how exactly data science can be exploited to improve the current existing uh, engineering process, engineering product, and so on. One minute. Hey, uh, again, uh, another question. Uh, can you guys quickly get into a mentee and tell me uh, which field data science falls under? Uh, 
computer science field okay great uh, one word for mathematics okay Okay, thank you. Thanks for the thanks for the input. Let's quickly uh, get into what is data science, uh, whether it's a computer science field or a mathematics field. Let's figure that out. Uh, it, it's a, a, a combination or confluence of uh, three areas. That's a computer science, a mathematics, or statistics, and the specific domain knowledge. So in this case, uh, the domain expertise. I mean that uh, it could be engineering, or it could be a finance, it could be a marketing. Or it could be uh, 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 anything, anything uh, in which you want to apply your data science skills. So that's what we mean by the special domain knowledge. And math and statistics are some very self-explanatory. You know that uh, what exactly the uh, the expectation uh, or uh, what are the things we cover in the uh, math and statistics. It's like uh, your uh, the basic statistics, or probability theory, or uh, uh, machine learning algorithms, and so on. The computer science. Uh, you, you, we don't expect uh, uh, computer science is a wide area, right? You don't expect everything to be known to you, but there are some major things that is something uh, to be known to any, any or every data scientist. So that is is a basic programming skills, right? So it could be uh, it, there are some uh, 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 important softwares um, that's available for the data science data, sci data science, and uh, expect that to be uh, uh, known to all the data scientists, but that's something you can upskill later. But the basic thing is you should be comfortable comfortable in a programming. It could be C programming, it could be a Python, it could be or anything. If you have a uh, comfort in the programming, then uh, data science is just a cakewalk for you guys. Also, the data science also uh, 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 have a different names or it's been uh, 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 termed in a different names. So data, data, big data analytics, or business analytics, business intelligence, machine learning, artificial intelligence, deep and reasonable learning. There are many, many, many uh, uh, names that's been used actually. But we, these are we can use any names interchangeably. There is not a much difference actually. There are slight difference. Yeah, there are slight difference. But uh, these names are uh, uh, used interchangeably in the market. So, but all of them are related. All of them are uh, more or less same. There is not a much of difference. I'll talk about that as well in, in uh, later point of the uh, presentation. Uh, any questions so far? Okay. Uh, so, so I just want to explain this particular uh, uh, the process. It is called uh, DAKY hierarchy. So, in a uh, data science. Uh, 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 domain or a data science process this is the typical process that's followed actually so we collect the uh, data from various resources it could be from uh, 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 the sensors or it could be from the transactional data or it could be from the other machine data so we collect all the data it could be a qualitative data or quantitative data so we collect all the data in a raw format that's the very uh, very first step or the first stage so once we get the data what we do is we connect all these data together or we find the relation between the uh, data to figure out what exactly the context we can uh, bring by connecting these data together so that's what we mean by the information stage uh, so the data science plays a crucial role in this particular stage that's information okay and the also we figure out what are the key factors that are uh, that are influencing your decisions for example if you want to make a decision okay uh, uh, what is the uh, what is the uh, uh, fuel consumption of a particular product that you are going to uh, manufacture? That could be different factors that could influence that, right? So it could be your uh, weight of the vehicle, or it could be the the structural aspect of your vehicle, and so on. So, 
so we need to uh, uh, we need to uh, figure out those uh, important factors or the variables that influencing your uh, target variable or influencing your final decision all figured out in this particular stage so once we have the understanding of the variables and the understanding of the data uh, and the relation between the data then we move to the next stage so this is where what we do is we build the multiple models we build the statistical models we build the machine learning models and we build uh, all kind of uh, uh, we use all kind of techniques to understand uh, the underlying pattern in the data or uh, we try to extract more information from the data so in other words we say that uh, we torture the data until it confesses the truth so that's the way we we say it in, uh, in 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 a, in a jovial way actually so we try to get as much information out of the data so that's the stage uh, this particular uh, uh, particular uh, th th that's what this particular stage explains then once we have the the more information on the knowledge the, what we do is you make use of that knowledge you apply the knowledge in actions you make additions you make uh, principles you make a policy or you make a uh, what can i say the uh, bureau bureaucratic decisions whatever it is so everything is based on this particular knowledge the knowledge is derived from the information information is derived from the data so that's the typical process that's followed in the any data science uh, uh, problem use case or the uh, context okay and uh, okay let me uh, ask another questions then why data science so we can use uh, any other uh, uh, methodology right we can use uh, the typical uh, 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 six sigma methodology the dmat methodology or we can use uh, some other methodology to understand uh, 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 to solve the business problem right but why data science because one minute one minute hey so uh, sorry uh, so the, the thing is that the, da the data is called a new oil. So this is a term that's been used in the market. So why it's called a, a new oil? Because oil, you know, right, crude oil, right? Crude oil is the one which which uh, uh, defines the the economy of the most of the uh, countries, or which defines the the inflation of the, uh, the the market, which defines the the price fluctuation of the market. So similarly, the data is something like a oil. So. Uh, but it's not useful in the raw format. Crude oil, the crude oil in its uh, raw form is not useful. What we need to do is we need to refine the crude oil to get the final product, like your gas oil, gasoline, petrol, or uh, kerosene, naphtha, bitumen, whatever it is. So you need to refine the product, then only you get a final product, and that can be used by the various class of business or the consumers. Similarly, the data in the raw format is not useful. You need to collect the data, you need to cleanse the data, you need to transform the data, and you need to make, create a value out of the data. Then only it's useful for the business, it's useful for the companies, it's useful for the individuals. So that's the uh, uh, that's, uh, way the market is moving right now. Even they even coined a term called the data economy. So 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 the most of the companies started uh, uh, investing in uh, uh, data science or uh, you can say the artificial intelligence or the machine learning to make more and more value out of it okay and uh, uh, as i said uh, another reason is that, that to create uh, to create value out of the tons and tons of data that get generated each and every day if it if it it's 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 get generated uh, by the enterprises it get generated by the companies it gets generated by the individual and me as well. If you are on a Facebook, you are LinkedIn, or uh, even if you are on a, a Google, whatever it is, all this uh, platform captures your data, captures your preferences, and based on that, it uses uh, its preferential algorithms to give you the advertisement to make you buy those things. So the data is uh, one thing which helps the enterprises to create more value out of it. And also the third thing is that to enable the data-driven scientific and informed decision making. So why is this important? In the current current uh, ways of working, what the engineers or the data scientists or the leaders do is they go by their uh, gut feeling. They go by their uh, experience. Based on their experience, based on the gut feeling, they make any decisions. But that's something uh, not a foolproof, right? You can end up in a wrong direction or in the wrong side. So what you can do, you need to have uh, some kind of... Uh, scientific evidences to support your decisions. That's what uh, the data science does here. 
it helps you to make an informed decision based on the science rather than just uh, based on the gut feeling. So that's another aspect why you need to go for a data science. And of course, create a better customer experiences. You can understand uh, what is the uh, preference of your customers or the feedback. Based on the feedback, you can understand what exactly the requirements of customers. Based on that, you can uh, deliver better experiences, better products. So those things are uh, 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 can be captured through data science, can be delivered through data science. That's why the data science is very important. And another thing is that uh, data science is not confined to a particular uh, domain. Right, so it's it's if it is engineering, okay. It, th there are uh, uh, different industries: the process industry, automobile industry. Let's say the pr product industry. These are the industries fall under, uh, uh, let's say, uh, engineering. And uh, similarly, the banking, insurance, and these other companies will fall under the uh, the finance. But data science will not, will not fall under one particular uh, domain. Actually, it, it, it's it's a more of an enabler. It, it gets used across different domains. It gets used in a manufacturing, it gets used in oil and gas like uh, Shell, Chevron, and Total, and it gets used in a finance companies like uh, uh, the banking sector, the insurance sector, and uh, trading, and uh, so various other fields it gets used. And of course, the healthcare. Healthcare is the one uh, typical example which is relevant to our uh, current pandemic as well. The biostats uh, statistician we call as the biostatisticians. They use uh, clinical data to figure out uh, uh, what are the symptoms which leads to a particular uh, disease. How they can uh, uh, address or the predict the disease in advance so that they can give a better uh, uh, treatments to uh, those patients. Those are the things that uh, can be done through data science. And uh, it, it, it's all in progress actually. So it's all happening actually. So, so that's the reason that data science is uh, very powerful because it can be uh, it, it can get bounded on the any domain, so it can't restrict it to one particular domain. That's another advantage of data science, and of course the cost reduction and the faster and better addition that brings to the table. So, uh, so those those are the the reasons why companies are moving towards data science. Uh, it's, it's it so earlier what what happens is there are uh, uh, IT. Uh, companies or the service industries that provides uh, these kind of uh, uh, analytical services or the data science services to the uh, the major companies. Now what happens is most of the companies wanted to build their own data science team. It, it's called a capty units. Uh, th th there are two reasons for that. One is that they want to reduce the cost because uh, by outsourcing the, the analytic services, you need to pay uh, more cost to the, the service providers. If you do the same thing in-house, you can significantly reduce your cost. That's one reason. The second reason is the data privacy. If you uh, share your data with your uh, uh, service providers, there is a possibility that your data get leaked. And some of the data you can't even share because those are very confidential data, very uh, uh, very red data, you call it as, we, we call it as a red data. We can't be shared. So what we need to do is we need to have a data science team inside the company which can, uh, which can uh, use the data to get more insights or more value or more, uh, uh, more, more uh, insights out of it. That's the reason that companies are moving towards setting up their own data science team. Okay. I think these are the reasons why the data science is important. Why we need to talk about data science right now. Yes, it's a buzzword in the market, but there is a need for it. That is a necessary to know about that. Okay. And, uh, and, and same, same questions. Why the hype around data science? Okay. I understand. Okay. There are uh, valid reasons to move towards data science. But this seems to be a more eye towards data science. So is this really a, a, a true? Uh, uh, is this is a true uh, market sense, or is this something uh, over eye of the data science? Yes, uh, probably uh, uh, people like us, data scientists, are a bit exaggerating the. Uh, you can think that we're exaggerating the things, but the thing is that these are the facts, right? The data size roles have grown over 60-50. 650% since 2012. This is our data of the Garner reports. Okay. And I've been predicted that demand of data science will increase by 28% by every year. That means there is a more demand for data science and less supply. So, so there is a high chance that if you uh, develop a skills along with your domain expertise, you can get into a data science, you can grow in the career, and you can make a better uh, uh, career uh, opportunities out of it. 
or you can enrich your career further and further. That's the point I want to make here. And also, as I said, the data science gives you a career flexibility. As I said, it's not a single domain. Whether you are a mechanical engineer or IT engineer or a, a biotechnology, it doesn't matter. You everyone have an opportunity. Okay. So because if, if you are a mechanical engineer, you can get into a companies like a, a, a Ford or you can get into a Caterpillar because there are some things that are relevant to engineering. Also, you have a data science skills. So it it, it acts as a more of a complementing each other for the company. So they look for those candidates. For example, in a shell, we look for look for engineers with a background of chemical engineering because we deal with the oil and gas, right? So people who have a chemical and uh, background, chemical engineering background, they'll understand uh, better about the chemical process, chemical systems, how the chemical reaction works, and so on. So these are the uh, reasons why engineers can venture into data science. Okay. Of course, the third, re fourth reason is the very important one: the high paychecks. Right. That's also very important. It's, it's not about only the sat job satisfaction or uh, the patient or whatever it is. You also need a, a better uh, a monetary benefit so that uh, you can keep yourself motivated and keep your family and the surroundings safe and secure and uh, uh, economically sustainable and so on. So this particular field uh, pays you well, and there is a high chance that you can. Uh, grow faster in the field as an uh, if you keep on uh, improving your skills keep on learning or keep on uh, delivering there's a high chance that uh, you can grow faster and you can improve your uh, uh, pay packages as well and of course it gives you a job security because that is a de more demand than the supply if there is a more demand than the supply there is no chance that you will be uh, losing your job or you will be kicked out of the job there is no way that that's going to happen in the another 10 to 15 years because that's my prediction that it will last. And also, uh, there is a di there is a different positions or abundance of positions in the data science, right? From the data engineer, data analyst, data scientist, ML engineer, or deep learning specialist, or uh, there is if you name it, there are some many many roles being created. So. It, it, it's a very less saturated compared to the other sector. Even the IT sector, you will have a very defined roles like a developer, tester, or a, a lead, a team lead, or so on. But here, you have a wide variety of roles. Even it's, it's get expanding day by day. As and when uh, the new fields are get added, something like a, 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 a deep learning or deep reinforcement, re, reinforcement learning, there are, there are a lot of new fields get added to the data science. That means there are new roles get recreated. So that means that you have a lot more opportunity to uh, explore or experiment or uh, join those positions. So these are the reason uh, 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 why we should look data science as a one of the alternative. Okay, and uh, uh, then there's the classic question: <laughs> Who is a data scientist? Then I said uh, there is no uh, clear definition for a data science, right? Simply, there is no clear definition for a data scientist as well. So, uh, in in a data science community, this is the definition we use often. Okay, data scientist is uh, someone who is better at statistics than a programmer, and better at programming than a statistician. That means it is an intersection area between the uh, programmer and the statistician. Okay, so that's what uh, uh, we, we we want to uh, understand here. So it's not a uh, 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 it's not only a role of a statistician. It's not a role of only a computer scientist or a, a programmer. It's a mix of different fields together. It's, it, it has a, a, a mathematical aspects or the statistical aspect. It also needs uh, some level of a programming skills. Also, it definitely definitely need a domain knowledge. If you are uh, in an engineering company, you need to know the, the engineering uh, domain knowledge of the particular company. If you're on uh, finance, you need to know the, the financial aspect of the uh, particular domain that you are in. Okay. If you're on a retail, you need to know how the the, uh, the customer experiences works, what is the uh, marketing strategies, how to do a campaigning, how to do a pricing. So those are things you need to know. So the, all the things things are equally important, but. Uh, but it, it, it doesn't mean that you just because I'm a, I'm a computer scientist, I can claim myself to be a data scientist. No, it's not possible. Okay. I, I similarly, I am a, I am a good at statistics. I have a degree in uh, MSc statistics, so I can claim myself to be a data scientist. No, it's not possible. You need to be equally skilled 
or you need to be uh, uh, i can say uh, moderately uh, skilled in all three uh, areas so that you can claim yourself to be a data scientist okay and here i can see the, uh, the infographic which tells about what are the different uh, backgrounds uh, uh, from which the data scientists come from the 25% of data scientists come from the computer science and 90% from the statistics and mathematics and those are very really, uh, evident because those are the the key things uh, that's uh, that's in, uh, key things used in uh, data science right and similarly the people 9% uh, of the people come from the engineering background and uh, someone like me <laughs> and there are other people as well uh, uh, slowly uh, getting into data science actually so uh, if you remember uh, 2000 or 2000 uh, uh, three seven times uh, anyone uh, who have a degree uh, in uh, engineering or uh, uh, arts and science they can get into a uh, uh, IT industry right I think that's the scenario will come in future so anyone who have a degree can easily get into a any degree can get into data science just that they need to have a uh, some uh, logical thinking some analytical intelligence these are the two key things we require but there's some things you can pick it up anytime and uh, picking up a statistics or picking up program is not a not a tough task at all. You guys are mechanical engineers. You guys studied uh, uh, more tougher topics than this. Actually, you guys studied uh, uh, what is it? Uh, 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 the the inertia, bending moment, uh, thermodynamics, fluid mechanics. You know, right? So those are more more tougher than these topics. Actually, so these guys are these topics are more of a child pay for you guys or something of a more cake walk files if you guys really uh but one thing that's very important is that you need to have a that appetite to play with the numbers or you need to have an interest to crunch the numbers you need to have a interest for mathematics or the programming so if you have aversion towards the programming if you have aversion towards the mathematics yeah it's not a cup of your tea okay so yeah that's about uh, uh, OES data scientist and uh, so these are the companies that use uh, data science extensively uh, you guys know that uh, Facebook Google Amazon Shell I just want to use my company as well <laughs> Uber and uh, Pfizer you, you guys know what is Pfizer I think Pfizer is the one uh, who first uh, uh, discovered the vaccine for COVID-19 and uh, it has offices in Chennai as well and it's looking for a lot of data scientists these days. So it's, it's a biostat company. They do a lot of uh, clinical trials and research, and they use those data to uh, uh, to understand the uh, the patterns or uh, the reasons or the symptoms for the disease and so on. So those are the companies. Also, you have a, a service provider as well, data analytics service providers. You have a Tiger Analytics, you have a Latin Analytics, you have a GenPack, you have a IBM. So these are the uh, these three uh, companies are more of a, a data analytics service providers. They take a project from any industry. They take a project from a retail, finance, or banking, or manufacturing, and they work like uh, any IT industry and they deliver the solutions. Right? But these are uh, uh, companies which have a captive units in the company itself. They have their own data science team. They use the data, they develop the solution, they implement the solution. Okay. Uh, that's about that. Uh, let me uh, quickly get into a, a data science journey. So before that, any questions in the chat box or from anyone? Right. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions from anyone so far? Okay. Uh, let's move on then. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, typical uh, data science journey that any company or industry takes, right? Uh, so they start with the, the typical uh, uh, data collection uh, process. Then they move to a next process called uh, creating a standard reports or the dashboards from those uh, uh, collected data. And then the next stage is uh, uh, the predictive analytics or we call as an insight generation. So based on the collected data, they try to predict the future, what's going to happen. 
uh, something like uh, what will be my demand for the next month, whether the, the, when the machine is going to fail, uh, whether the customer is going to uh, churn or not. So these are the future predictions they do with the data. That's the second stage. And the third stage, once I have a, a past data, also I have a, some understanding of the future. Uh, so I want to make a best decision out of it. How to do that? Use optimization. So we use a OVA techniques or simulation techniques to understand Or if you change a particular uh, uh, state or particular uh, condition, how the uh, solution will differ. So those things will be get explored in uh, uh, prescriptive analytics, or we can call it a foresight generation. There's a one more thing called the right side or the cognitive analytics. Uh, th that's not in the uh, uh, picture. So that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, a particular uh, uh, stage talks about all the advanced uh, trending areas right now. That's artificial intelligence or uh, deep and range first one learning on all those things will come in that particular uh, uh, stage. So where they try to uh, uh, mimic the human brain, the system that thinks like a human, that act like a human. So that's the stage we call as a cognitive analytics. Okay. These are the uh, typical journey that any uh, company takes to uh, mature in the analytics or the data science field. I also just to give you the uh, few examples of the use cases in the each of these uh, 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 different uh, 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 analytics types so that you can get a, a flavor of what are the different use cases get addressed in the uh, uh, in this particular uh, areas okay uh, so the descriptive analytics use cases uh, so so uh, so earlier, before uh, 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 the, the data science boom or whatever it is, uh, so the, the what readership team do is uh, uh, they they get a, a monthly reports from the, uh, the the teams to understand uh, that performance, key performance indicators like uh, what is the production for the month, what is the quality uh, uh, issues for the month, what is the revenue generation, what is the sales uh, volume. So they get all this information in a, a form of a, a dashboard or in a form of a standard report so that they can quickly understand where we are uh, uh, right now, where we are going and what is the direction in which we are going. It is called a management information system, right? So these are the reports that get generated based on the, the data that get collected in the uh, 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 various teams or the various fields and so on. The same thing, uh, even we do it in the uh, this particular uh, phase of analytics. It's called a descriptive analytics. It just tells you what happened so far. Okay, that is based on your past data. You just uh, collect the data, you cleanse the data, you transform the data, you just slice and dice the data into various uh, graphs, visuals, or the charts, and you try to get more insights out of it. That's the stage, uh, this particular stage. Okay. And uh, uh, then second is uh, the last game visualization dashboard. This is something uh, we have done in our uh, uh, shell. Uh, if, if you if you know a uh, uh, shell, it's an oil and gas industry, right? So what it what it does is uh, it exposes the oil in the upstream and transfers that oil. That oil means the crude oil to the refinery and refines the crude oil and sends it to the various markets. That's a typical uh, uh, process. So then when we transport this crude oil from the source to the sink, that's from the explosion site to the refinery, it gets transported in various modes. It can get transported through pipes, road transport, or through ships in the sea. When we transport uh, through ship, uh, there is a chances that uh, you, 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 there is a, a chances that the oil get evaporated. There is a chance that the uh, oil get uh, uh, stolen. Uh, there is a chance that the oil get mixed with the water. All the things can happen. It's possible. So, so what we do is uh, uh, the companies will make agreement with the suppliers, saying that uh, yes, there is a natural loss that happening because of evaporation. Also, there are uh, other losses also uh, uh, get observed. So let's agree to the agree. Uh, let's agree that in a contract, anything within this uh, um, threshold limit of loss. We, we, we are okay, but if it goes beyond the particular threshold limit, 
we will charge you or we make a claim to you so that's the kind of argument they make so what we do is we track this loss and gain for each of the voyages so and we give this um, reports to the uh, uh, management or a particular team so they can go and make the claims to the supplier so so basically what we do is we just collect the uh, uh, data that is what happened and we slice and dice the data and we get the insights and we provide the uh, recommendations to the team and they will uh, act on those recommendations okay but otherwise we are not building any model we are not using any techniques in this particular stage similarly uh, sales and revenue reports if you are a retail manager if you want to uh, know uh, what is your sales and revenues by end of the month you look, look you look for a standard report or the dashboard to quickly understand uh, the different uh, key performance metrics so that's what uh, we do it here similarly the quality dashboard if you are in a manufacturing setup uh, there is a team called incoming quality right they do a uh, measure uh, uh, quality of a product in a random manner and they do figure out what is the parts per million uh, defects and so on so those things also get captured in a standard dashboard or uh, reports and they get used or consumed by the leadership team so, so if you look overall, so, so the, in this in this particular stage or the uh, step, what we do is we use the existing data, uh, whatever uh, 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 existing in a various formats, in Excel format, or in, in uh, uh, GSAP data, or whatever it is. We use this data and we connect those data and we create some value from the data. That is what the, we do in this particular stage. And what are the tools that we use for this uh, 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 particular uh, use cases? Uh, all tricks it's a, a graphical user interface tool for uh, doing a lot of uh, data analytic uh, work uh, so we, we use this all tricks for uh, uh, data uh, cleansing data manipulation or data transformation and so on and uh, then once all the data uh, uh, cleansing algorithm is done we push the uh, cleanse data to the power bi or the dash or the table these are the different visualization softwares or softwares or the tools. My Power BI is a Microsoft uh, a tool, and Power BI is Power. Uh, sorry, uh, Proxy Dash is the open source tool, Python based open source tool, and the Tableau is again the proprietary tool uh, which is used widely for the uh, visualization and the dashboard creation. Okay, so this is about uh, the descriptive analytics. Uh, any questions in this? If not, then I move to the next one. The predictive analytics use cases. Uh, as the uh, name uh, explains, it's, uh, it, it takes care of any uh, 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 predictive use cases in this particular stage. Uh, it can be anything. It could be a demand prediction. It could be a failure prediction. It could be a, a predicting the customer churn or uh, uh, predicting the uh, 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 bad depths. Or it could be uh, predicting the weather. It could be anything. So any any uh, any prediction can be addressed in this particular stage, or you can say you can use uh, uh, algorithms to predict your uh, objective uh, function. In this case, let's assume let's let's go one by one. Machine failure prediction. What is machine failure prediction? Uh, so you know, you know shell right? You know shell or caterpillar. You take uh, caterpillar. Let's assume caterpillar. Caterpillar have a uh, uh, machines. It's a uh, heavy machines, right? And those machines are used in uh, uh, mining, construction, uh, or forestry, or in various other fields is get used. So what what uh, Caterpillar uh, does is the Caterpillar engines on all the equipments have a sensors being fitted. It's a fully electronic engine. So what the sensor does is these sensors feed the data back to the uh, 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 databases. That is, each and every uh, seconds. It, it it senses the temperature of the engine or it, 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 it checks the level of the engine oil or it checks the uh, what is the speed at which the, the vehicle is running right now or how many times the the operator is changing the uh, gear uh, gear lever so everything is sensorized so these sensor will stream the data back to the system so those data get collected and we use those data to build the models we build a statistical model or we build a machine learning model we build, build a, some uh, uh, time series or uh, uh, or a prediction model to understand what is the health of the machine right now okay for example 
if there is a, 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 a use case where you want to understand when the machine is going to uh, uh, break down or when the machine is going to uh, stop so what you can do is you can understand the uh, symptoms before uh, it's, it's get break down right it could be uh, uh, symptoms like uh, uh, the the the, the or, 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 uh, air filter choke or it could be uh, symptoms like uh, there is high temperature observed in the engine or it could be uh, uh, the nozzle uh, get uh, uh, broken so it could be anything, right? So, the, but the sensors give the data. So we use those data to understand whether uh, these are performing within the uh, expected uh, 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 limits or it is be going beyond the limits. If it's going beyond the limits, we raise the red, 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 red tag or the red flag and we alert the engineers so that they can address the failures in advance to avoid any catastrophic failure. So the same thing, it's, 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 it's the same thing like you are, uh, uh, you are, uh, uh, your doctor uh, uh, does in the hospital, right? They do have measure the various vitals of your health. They do measure your heart rate. They do measure your pulse rate. They do measure your oxygen level, and they keep monitoring your health by using those vital parameters. Whether uh, how how exactly you are responding to the treatment, right? So 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 that uh, they can avoid any kind of uh, 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 fatal uh, incidents. So that's the same thing. We are, we we just uh, use the same kind of a methodology here by by using the data. We try to predict the machine failures in advance um, using the patterns that observed in the the historical data. Okay, and then the next one, the predicting the talking in the eyes. Similarly, uh, uh, if you are a material science, uh, uh, metallurgical engineer, or a, uh, or a material science field, uh, what people do is that they mix a different uh, metals and that they do test the what is the uh, uh, toughness of the material what is the breaking point of the material what is the ductile strength and various other uh, the physical uh, properties right so what you need to do if you want to uh, experiment with the different com you can do a n number of combination right the combination and permutation to understand uh, when it's going to break but it's really uh, cost consuming uh, it's really a uh, time consuming so how you can do that based on the historical data of whatever the the minimal data we have from the uh, uh, the lab experiments we can use the data to predict with this particular percentage of uh, uh, mixing this particular metal and this particular metal uh, this could be the breaking point so you can predict that machine learning algorithms will help you to predict that so you don't need to do uh, everything manually uh, with the experimentation if you just need to do a some level of experimentation, then you can use the algorithms to predict what could be the potential breaking point for the new alarm. So those are things you can do. And predicting the choke. Uh, so this is a, 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 a understanding the behavior of the customers before uh, uh, the customer uh, churning out. If you uh, figure out the reasons or the behaviors of the customers, like uh, uh, giving a negative feedback or reduce, uh, decreased in sales or uh, uh, not turning up often for the buying the product. So they can, uh, what they do is they understand, okay, this customer is going to churn. So what they can do is they give some offers. They give some uh, uh, promotional offers uh, or rewards. So these are the things uh, uh, all these e-commerce companies does actually. They understand the customer behavior and uh, from the data or from the purchase history. And based on that, they'll try to make them to be a uh, loyal, loyal customer to them. And the uh, the fourth one, the bad depth prediction. So again, uh, you, you know that, right? So uh, all the uh, banking uh, uh, industry or the financial uh, uh, companies, what they do is before offering a loan, they do uh, check uh, a lot of uh, parameters. One thing is that they check the your civil score, they check you, are you uh, uh, married or unmarried, uh, you are living in a, a urban area or a rural area. Uh, what is your uh, uh, annual salary uh, what is your age they look at all these parameters before offering the loan the reason is that they have an algorithm in the back end to predict what is the possibility that this particular uh, guy end up in a uh, default list that's what they do there are algorithms in place to understand whether to offer a loan or not there's a probability which tell you whether to offer a loan or not so so that's what that's how the algorithms or the predictive modeling being used in the uh, industry Okay. Of course, the tools used for uh, uh, building the predictive models are the, again the alt traits, the Python, 
and there is another tool called R Studio, which is widely used for uh, data science uh, solution development in the market. And let me go to the the third one. That's pres prescriptive analytics use case. This is something my uh, favorite because I come from the optimization background. I did my masters in optimization and operation research. So uh, this is my uh, uh, bread and butter. Uh, so uh, in these things, what we do is that uh, we know uh, the past historical uh, uh, data. We also know what's going to happen in the future. Knowing these two information, what the best decision we can take at this point of time. Those things can be addressed by this particular uh, 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 analytic uh, uh, stage. So uh, these are the different use cases I'm going to talk about. The maintenance schedule optimization. Uh, if you take uh, any industry, or uh, it's an automobile industry, or uh, oil and gas, or uh, any process industry, you know that uh, the assets needs to go for a maintenance in a frequent manner. It could be a monthly maintenance, or it could be a be a, a quarterly maintenance, it could go for a yearly maintenance, sometimes it'll go for a turnaround. Turnaround means they just stop all the operations and they carry out all the maintenance activities. Okay, uh, so to uh, plan those maintenance activities, we need to have a proper schedule so that you can uh, wisely use your resources because you will have a different uh, resources, right? That could be a plumber, that could be a carpenter, that could be a uh, different other uh, workers who perform different activities. So, so uh, and most of the times these uh, uh, workers are hired as a contractual staff or uh, these being given as a contract to the other companies. So what we need to do is so you need to know the uh, uh, proper plan in place before carrying out these activities though, so that you can minimize uh, your overall cost or uh, underutilizing of the resources. So those can be done using this uh, optimization techniques. So you need to have a clear objective. Objective is nothing but uh, minimizing the overall cost and you will have a different constraint like uh, there are only two carpenters available, only two plumbers are available. And this is the time on which you need a plumbers to work on this particular area. And this is the time on which uh, this particular worker to work on this particular uh, platform. So you will have all kind of constraints. Those constraints will be uh, converted into a mathematical form. And uh, we once we solve the problem, this will give you the final best schedule for your for your maintenance plan. And similarly, the blending optimization. That's another uh, classical example. Uh, so uh, I worked on a few uh, blending optimization problems. So what we do is uh, uh, we have a, a blending hubs in uh, Singapore, uh, uh, London, and uh, Netherlands, and so on. So what, we, uh, what, what happens is once you get a, uh, uh, let's say, the different groups, once you get a different groups, the, uh, the groups are not of the same properties. Each, each crude will have a different quality parameters with respect to a specific gravity, density on the uh, uh, RON, MON, octane number. So based on the different parameters, each of the quality of the crudes will vary. So what we do need to do is we need to mix these crudes in a way that we can uh, deliver the, the blended crude to the customer. So based on his quality requirements. So how do we do that? Again, we use optimization techniques. Again, we will have a cost of each of these crudes the quality parameters of this group and we, we set up a mathematical form by uh, keeping the objective function as reducing the overall uh, cost or increasing the margin and the constraint could be that meeting the expected quality parameters of the customers so then once you solve the problem then you get a final blending ratios okay blend uh, crude a crude crude a should be mixed with the uh, 20 uh, percent and crude B should be mixed with 30% and crude C should be mixed with 50%. If you mix these crudes in this ratio, you can get the final brand with the record quality parameters at the reduced cost. So that's uh, how we solve the problem. Okay. And the third one, the feed optimization. Uh, that's again an again interesting problem. Uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, you have a uh, 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 feed disk. Feed disk, uh, disk, I mean that. Uh, there is a team which takes care of scheduling the vessels from uh, uh, transporting uh, fuels uh, from through vessels from uh, Gulf region or uh, from uh, US to the various parts of the country or to the east. Right. Similarly, you have another uh, uh, disk that's a fuel disk that takes care of uh, transporting uh, your uh, finished products like a gas oil, gasoline or whatever it is. Uh, so the, the idea is how we can combine these two uh, uh, 
schedules uh, these two free together, or we can co-load these frees together so that we can minimize the overall cost. That's again optimization problem. So, so that's how. Uh, uh, sorry, any any questions? Sorry. Okay. So yeah. So, so the the final final objective is that how you can minimize your uh, uh, overall uh, uh, cost, or how you can minimize the number of your voyages, so that uh, you can uh, achieve better uh, uh, better utilization of your vessels, or you can achieve better margin out of these functions. That's the idea. And the space planning optimization this is in uh, retail uh, uh, business. If you have a, 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 a retail business, you need to know what is the uh, uh, what exactly the space utilization you can do, how you can maximize your space, how you can maximize your uh, uh, margins by utilizing the space. Uh, because they, based on your uh, customer footfall and the customer eyeball, you will have a different uh, 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 margins that get generated or revenue get generated. So how you can place your product in a way that you can uh, maximize your revenue by uh, uh, optimizing your space. Those are the problems get addressed in the optimization as well. So what are the tools we use for this? We use a MATLAB, again we use a Python and we use uh, the IBM uh, Cplex Studio. This is a specific uh, software used for optimization. And uh, third thing, again very interesting one, the cognitive analytics. Uh, this is more like, so cognitive is nothing but we mimic the human brain or we make the algorithm to think like a human or to act like a human. So that's what it, it's called a cognitive analytics or it's called artificial intelligence. So you have a intelligence that means a human intelligence to artificially create a, a brain or intelligence that's called artificial intelligence. So the, some of the examples or use cases if you look at the automated document classification. Let's assume uh, 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 there is a team uh, which sits in, a, a, let's say, uh, any domain, and they get a different documents. They get a report, they get a legal document, they get a contractual document, they get a, the quality document, or quality standards, whatever it is. But they get tons and tons of these data, tons and tons of these reports or documents. But they need to classify these documents in a way that uh, it, it, it could be easy for the retrieval, it could be easy for uh, 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 usage and so on. But manually doing this particular task is uh, very mundane and very accurate. It's not easy. So what we need to do, we need to come up with an algorithm which can, which can understand the, the contents in the documents and automatically classify which particular uh, folder it's supposed to go or which particular category this particular document falls under. So that's what uh, we do in this particular uh, stage, or particular analytics space. So we build the algorithm uh, and we use uh, some text uh, analytics or uh, uh, text mining uh, algorithms to understand the contents in the document. And based on that, we will automatically allow the algorithm to classify the documents. And the second one is automated report narratives. Okay? And you know that whenever you create a chart or a visuals or the graphs, you you add your uh, 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 insights uh, from the uh, visuals or the graphs, saying that okay, sales has increased by ten percent, or uh, quality has decreased by so and so. So these are the something you write manually, right? But there are algorithms that's available which can automatically write narratives for you, or you can you can just customize those uh, packages or the algorithms in a way that that can be suitable for your uh, narratives. So those things are highly available. So it, it gives, uh, it, it saves lots and lots of man hours and lots and lots of uh, mundane activity that's going on in the uh, various functions right now. The third thing is the auto data cleansing. It's not only, so, I'll, so that's a very interesting point. So I'll, the data science not only uses the data, it also cleanses the data. For example, when you get a data, all the data is not 100% good or 100% perfect you will have a lot of noise in the data. The data is nothing but 80% of pattern and 20% noise. Or it could be a different uh, combination, but you can't see any data without noise. So noise, I mean that uh, uh, there is a null value, there is a missing value, there is a manual errors, there could be a different other reasons your data, data is not up to the mark. So what we do is 
we also have some algorithms or we can try the algorithm uh, using various data science techniques and uh, figure out uh, how you can uh, fix those data quality errors uh, in the data uh, how, or how you can fix those defects those can be done using uh, this particular uh, uh, cognitive analytics and and the last but not least the automated vehicle even the Elon Musk is uh, promising to provide a the, the automated uh, self-driving vehicle, right? Those are all purely based on the cognitive analytics. It's, it's, uh, it's using the techniques called uh, deep or the reinforcement learning. It's called the machine teaching. They teach the machines to behave like a human. So those are the things also falls under this particular uh, space. So what are the tools again used in this in this uh, 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 space? Uh, Bonsai is again a Microsoft-based uh, deep or reinforcement learning tool. And Python also can be used. Python is a widely used tool. That's the reason I always uh, 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 encourage people to learn Python or uh, get a, some decent uh, programming skill in the Python so that they can uh, quickly equip themselves to ready for the data science. And the R Studio also can be used for uh, building these solutions. Uh, so those are the, uh, the four uh, 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 different analytics we use in the analytic journey or data science journey and also I, I, I share uh, different use cases any questions please uh, raise your hand or uh, post a question on the on the final slide we are almost uh, uh, close to end so the final questions so yeah it's great it looks interesting yeah the, uh, it looks uh, very exciting so how I can become a data scientist or how to become a data scientist? That's a question that's been in your mind right now, right? So the, the statement is very clear. You already have a domain knowledge. You are very good in your domain. That's my understanding. Being a mechanical engineer, you are very good in your uh, uh, domain, like uh, it's uh, uh, thermodynamics or it's uh, fluid mechanics or it's automobile engineering, whatever it is. You are good in your domain. So what you need to do is you need to pick up additional skills like uh, uh, programming in any one of the data science language. I, I personally uh, suggest or encourage uh, Python. Also brush up your statistical skills or statist statistical knowledge. So if you do that, also uh, do some kind of, uh, 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 do, do some, uh, some uh, uh, problem solving. I mean that there are some uh, uh, websites which provides the uh, data science use cases or the hackathons or conducts competitions, you can enter yourself and, and see how exactly uh, you are able to logically think on the solve those problems that gives you a confidence to uh, groom your skills in this particular space. And these are the resources you can uh, use to uh, enhance your skills. Uh, for analytical basic, you can, with, uh, you can visit analytics with you. It gives you a, a complete understanding of uh, statistics and mathematics and uh, how to use those statistical skills to solve the business problems or the business use cases and so on and to understand the math basics i think this is something you guys are already aware i guess the Khan academy uh, it's again uh, interesting uh, 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 interesting interesting platform to understand any math basics or the math concept and so on and I strongly recommend this particular course. Among all the resources, I strongly recommend Analytics Edge course. Uh, if you're really uh, interested or really want to know what exactly the data science or want to get the feel of data science or uh, gets your hands dirty, please, please enroll for this course. This is a free course. It's offered by MIT. Uh, you know MIT, right? Uh, US MIT, not uh, our MIT. Uh, so this, uh, this course gives you a comprehensive understanding of how data can be uh, collected, cleansed, and uh, models can be developed using those data to get some value out of it. Uh, but one thing is that they use R uh, to explain the concept, but it's a very good course to get a complete understanding or uh, um, uh, how exactly the data science works, how exactly we solve the problem using data science tools. And again, there are, again, there are some other courses you can find in the uh, Coursera. And uh, as I said, uh, for uh, use cases and the stories and the hackathons, you can visit this particular site, uh, www.ktl.com. It's a uh, uh, analytical, uh, 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 it is a platform in which, which conducts uh, uh, analytical competitions and hackathons.
to uh, to uh, enable the the data scientists to collaborate and develop solutions as well as to enhance their skills so these are the things you can do to become a data scientist if at all you are interested okay i think i stop here any questions and answers or any uh, clarification you need please Thank you, Shri Arun Kumar. I, I am Jay Segal from Petroleum Engineering Department. Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you. Ex excellent webinar. You have covered everything, even of my interest also regarding petroleum transportation and the pipeline losses and everything. Actually, petroleum industry involves a lot of challenges. It involves a lot of money, a lot of time, everything. Right. Data science is very, very, very important for the decision making in each and every part. Whether the place is desirable for drilling, whether we have to drill that well, whether we have to complete that well, whether that well is economically uh, is, uh, well for development, whether the oil quality, what is the potential of the well, data science is very, very important. Yes. Uh, actually, I wanted to know uh, what are the softwares, softwares required so that our people can enter into the data science in, in all the um, there are a lot of industries because petroleum industries are limited and they are taking limited people uh, petroleum industry they are not only taking petroleum engineers they are taking all other people also yeah. so the petroleum engineering what they were studying is very very limited so they, they have to switch over to data sciences and for interpretations and you people are doing a lot of interpretations and how to enhance the placement that is our uh, interest uh since, since 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 you are uh, uh, i understand you are a professor so my suggestion is that include uh, uh, machine learning or uh, optimization or any of these courses as a lp courses in the curriculum students curriculum so that they can get a exposure through the curriculum rather than uh, learning on their own uh, through the courses or the online platforms so, so so to be honest I developed my interest in uh, uh, mathematics uh, through my uh, last year elective course I had in my engineering. I had an occupation research as one of my elective courses. I really love that course. I basically I love mathematics right from my college days or school days. Uh, but that particular uh, op course was really high opening for me. So how? Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, actually I want to know what are the softwares because. Uh, you are doing a lot of interpretations and then uh, you are taking a lot of the other foreign fields also for interpretations and development. Yeah. What are the softwares is uh, very much related to for the interpretation and deciding Python. deciding part. Yeah, Python. Python is the one software I always recommend. Oh. You can use Python for wide wide variety of analytics that I discussed about. You could have seen that I, I, I mentioned Python in all the analytical uh, uh, descriptive analytics or uh, descriptive analytics. Or, uh, descriptive analytics. I, I strongly suggest Python. There that, are that two reasons for it. One is it, it's a open source and it's, it's highly flexible and it's, 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 it's quite easy. It's like a learning unit. So, Python is the one software I recommend for anyone who really wants to venture into data science. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr. Arun Kumar. Excellent presentation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. With pandemic in full swing and the world decision, marine engineering student can look into this opening. So, what they should do enter into the show shop in the shipping. Uh, uh, that's a good question. Um, I, I'm not sure uh, what other things get covered in a uh, 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 marine engineering curriculum. Uh, as I said. Uh, the future is going to be a data science. That means it, it doesn't matter what background you come from. As I said in 2000 or 2003, anyone uh, uh, with a degree, uh, is an engineering degree or arts degree, get into a IT sector and they train the people and they give the job and they make sure that they are ready for the uh, project that they're going to work on. Similarly, uh, it, it doesn't matter uh, where, where you are uh, uh, come from and which background you come from. If you have an interest, these are two things that are important. If you have an interest to play with the numbers, and if you are comfortable doing the programming, it's a basic program. You're not going to do an IEN programming that, uh, that computer scientists, or IT engineers are doing. No, you're not going to do that. It's a very basic programming, like something more of uh, the C programming. 
programming or something uh, more of a very very uh, 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 simple program you are going to do you are comfortable in these things also you have a uh, some logical uh, thinking or analytical intelligence if you think i think everyone have that <laughs> then you are fit for are you are ready for the data science that's it you just need to uh, acquire few skills so, right, as i said uh, you can uh, learn python there are a lot of online free courses or a free platforms you can go and enroll yourself and you can uh, uh, enrich your skills and yeah so those are the things you need it doesn't matter which background you come from but if you really want to get into a no i want to get into data science but i also want that to be related to somewhere related to a marine engineering yeah you can you need to look for uh, those industries uh, there are some industries uh, which which does a lot of uh, the the vessel or ship handling or uh, uh, what are the ship scheduling and so on you can get into those industries with your data science skills so that it will be relevant to your uh, background at the same time you can use your data science skills yeah i I'm, i'm not aware of those industries but there are the point is that all the industries started exploring the data science started using the data science started building their own data science teams so everyone have the opportunities so but you need to uh, explore those opportunities where exactly it lies and so on okay hope that answers your question uh, radha krishna uh anyone thank you so much thank you so much very nice uh, excellent presentation very interesting very good opening thank you sir uh any other question from anyone i don't see any questions from students <laughs> come on guys Nana Shankar, you have any questions? Uh, I think uh, students, uh, they they might be thinking about the opportunities, and uh, I think they start at now itself thinking about how they can get into this particular field. Oh, I think okay. that might be the reason they are not uh, asking any questions. Oh, uh, okay, that's great. That's great. Uh, yeah, you can also reach out to me in person. I also will uh, share my uh, email ID with uh, Nana Shankar, and uh, you can get in touch with me. Uh, to more know more about this or uh, to understand how exactly uh, you can explore this opportunities and so on but yeah so the idea is that uh, uh, i just want to stay grounded not go detail into uh, different techniques regression other day clustering there are different other techniques we use i don't want to get into that i just want to give you the high level view of uh, what is data science how exactly uh, it, it can be used how the engineers can look that as one of the career opportunity and so on that's a uh, intent and agenda of uh, this session who hope that address this uh, uh, uh if any other questions uh, yes from sodan side any other questions i think no question from sodan side there is no question i just want to get at least the feedback can i go to the menti again and tell me whether it is useful or not useful as something to think about it, it's an anonymous survey by the way no one is going to know <laughs> okay Useful, sir. Very useful. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I think some students have joined the letter, so they are not able to log in into menti. dot com. No problem. That's fine. That's okay. fine. Cool. Thank, thank you. Thank you, na. So I invite Dr. Leela Vinodan, sir, to 
address the vote of thanks so i hope that uh, participants uh, had a wonderful session i think uh, arun kumar sambandhan have uh, given the overall picture about the uh, data science and uh, what are all the opportunities for the engineers and uh, whoever it may be i think uh, i would like to uh, mention a point that uh, uh, even a uh, medical shop person he know what kind of a medicine or a drugs he have but only the doctor knows what kind of medicine should be taken for a particular disease so i think this is where the uh, the core knowledge of mechanical engineer or uh, electrical engineer or uh, mining petroleum that comes into play so that is where i think uh, arun kumar sambandhan also uh, referred to so your expertise will be utilized in the field of the data analytics so your expertise will always be there still you are a core person but it is and utilized by the by the company in a different way so in that way i think uh, the core uh, knowledge is going to give you give you a lot, lot of uh, help and then uh, still you be a core engineer so it doesn't mean that you are completely shifted uh, into a different stream it is not a it thing at all because uh, um here afterwards everything is data driven whatever you start from your mobile and uh, whatever you use everything is data driven so i i would like to thank uh, our resource person arun kumar sambandhan for uh, enlightening and then giving a overall picture about the data analytics and the opportunities in that and uh, giving a hope for the student to start up with and then he also shared his experience how he transformed from mechanical engineer into a data analytic and uh, how you made a lot of uh, important in the company what he is uh, currently working in and i take take this opportunity to thank all the participants and our resource person and our management for uh, having such kind of a session and i hope that we will have such kind of session in the future also once again i thank you all